TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick. We are not live. And when I say kick, I mean K-I-C-K dot com, not kick messenger. Uh, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right above me, this is the the channel where you can catch all of the highlights from the live and things of that nature. Um, if you happen to miss it, don't forget we do got merch. Appreciate everybody who bought, man. I've been, I'm seeing y'all sending me pictures of the merch. I appreciate it. Uh, don't forget we also got the Patreon. We post five days a week. We just posted Line of Duty. Uh, by the time y'all see this, it'll be like four or five hours ago we posted it. Um... And the link to all of this is down in the description of the video. You click description or click more or whatever, and you'll see link tree down there. Click that link tree, and it'll take you to all my socials. It'll be a list. You can just click it. You know what time it is, though. Can't pay. We'll take it away. <laughs> ah, season three, episode three, man. Let's get into it. They put the hood right on there, didn't According they? According to new reports, evictions in England and Wales are soaring. Statistics released by the Ministry of Justice for the first quarter of 2015 show a rise of over 50% compared to the same period five years ago. <sighs> 300 a day. Steve Pinner and Paul Bowhill are High Court Enforcement Agents. These are my boys. Together they have 45 years experience in the debt recovery industry. Today they're on their way to South East London to carry out an eviction. Okay, this is a writ of possession. Uh, it's South East 6, which is Catford. The landlord wants to move back into his property and started the eviction process four months ago. Turn right here. Yep. But the tenants have refused to leave. If we pull up here, we can walk down. This job is going to need all their patience and experience. Yeah, I got the right men for the job. When I knock on the door for the first time, I think to myself, what's it's a behind nice door. the door? Whether it's somebody pleasant, aggressive, old, young. Got to be an old lady, man. Stained glass window, green door. Nice little canopy type joint. You just never know until the door opens. Morning. What happened? That's a ale. Police. No. High court enforcement. The tenant, Theo Mann and his family, I have couldn't lived be here for five years. I just wake up. Oh. Okay. This letter yes. says that you and everybody else must leave the house. Leave the house? Yes. Our job today is to repossess this property. But how? OK. Sir, you didn't give me any time. You didn't give me no notice. We don't have to give you notice. How? Now, I want to say, this is uh, this country, the United, United Kingdom, has a human rights. Sorry, the human rights is a different department. It's nothing to do with it. <laughs> OK, now you come to here. OK, sir. Okay. Yes, you have human rights. Yeah. You have the right to live in this country. Yeah. You do not have the right to this house. What happens is you get your emergency stuff together, passports, ID, medication, clothes for a few days, and then you can come back and collect everything else in a few days. My young, my young children go to outside to this moment. The children went to school. Well, you need to... I just say, you have to think about my human rights. And you have to think, think about my I, situation. I am. I'm saying you should get down to the council and explain to them what, what's happened. Look, this country, the government, the United Kingdom... I'm sorry, the country, can, can, I the interrupt? can I interrupt? I'll Given be, me... Can I be interrupt? Because I'm the voice of reason. You've got an hour to get your personal belongings together. If you choose not to leave or make a fuss, we will call the police and you will be ejected into the street. Start packing, please. Uh, That's it. Start packing. No, I don't want to discuss it. Start packing. I will. Locksmith. Locksmith. Right, as soon as we've 
cleared the decks there. Bro, still trying to talk. Well, you ain't finna get out of this. You can change the locks. Time's up. The landlord, Dr. Huang, is waiting across the street. Paul gives him an update. Mm. The procedure is that we give them an hour okay. to get their personal belongings together. Okay. Thinks we're infringing his human rights. <laughs> I didn't want to go into a what about your human rights. <laughs> Given a couple hours. No, uh, one hour. I, I tidy up or something. But there's no need to tidy up. When you leave the house... Yes, sir, sir, you're coming here. When, I'll show, I'll show you quickly. When you leave the house, it doesn't matter. No, my, it's not good. Finally, Paul and Steve seem to be making progress. It's not, but it's then, just the eviction top takes top an unexpected turn. I... The landlord has arrived on the doorstep and the tenant starts making threats. Okay. You need to, you need to take that up okay. separately. We're okay, only here involved okay. with this house. Okay, That's sir. all. I tell something. That, that one. Mr. Go Sai Wang, he would take a knife, he would kill, kill me. I show you the evidence. Normally, we ask the landlord on an eviction okay. to keep away because as soon as the tenant sets eyes on the landlord, yeah, it's possibility or a problem. When he eventually comes out, he put that machine, he put that blade on him. He's going to be all upset and angry. Okay. And the first one he's going to see is you. <laughs> so the landlord strongly denies the old man's accusations. Yeah, just, do you have a car? Oh, he claims the tenant stopped yeah. paying rent and started to harass him after they were asked to leave. And they send a lot of old letter, uh, rubbish letter, so accumulates me a personality, work and everything. As you heard, they say that I'm a criminal. <laughs> So it makes things really, really difficult for me, and it's really stressful to get it out as well, so... The landlord, Go Tai Huang, he is... A How did they run across each other? Criminal. You can understand. He would have the tenant a shows Paul a victim support card from the police. Mr. Go Tai Huang, he would have killed me. Uh, police, no. At this moment, Go Tai Huang... It's not That's attempted M. He should be in jail if that was the case. He is my enemy. Okay. Please. Are the police okay. dealing with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's nothing to do with me yeah. then. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, but you have till one o'clock to pack and go. Well, I'm not giving up one hour. No, that's one hour. We've been here half an hour already. Pack. Please go to outside. No, no, we're here. We have to stay. We're changing the locks and we have to stay here. Okay. Dr. Huang says he was visited by the police, but they decided not to take action. There's obviously a lot of drama and emotion involved in this one. It isn't that we're not concerned. We're sympathetic to the cause, full of empathy, all, like all of those things. The but once the High Court writ is issued, whatever stands before that is of no consequence to us. FYI, I mean, uh, and so we Man and his partner have finally started to pack. My family, including young children, they. My family became homeless we widow on the street. So would you like to get your stuff outside? Move everything outside now. But the tenant is not going without a fight. And this time, his anger is directed at the agents. I will not sue you! Okay. You! Okay. This guy, he broke United Kingdom law. This guy, I use my human rights. The United Kingdom has human rights. The United, United Kingdom, this is a human rights country. This guy, this guy, this guy is illegal. This guy, this guy, okay, come here. Come here, come here. <laughs> this guy, this guy is ask, not a may, king. May I, ask a I use my human rights to against your power, Can evil I, power. The judge's power. Where's Jackie? Here. He's written that warrant. Do you have it? Okay, no, I this asked. This guy, this is evil. I asked. This is an evil, evil. You have to down to hell. I... You down to hell. Including you, you. Oh, I'm okay. okay. Paul and Steve must regain control of the situation, or the insults might turn violent. Whatever you do, I didn't ask you. You better be caught. Y'all better chill, Paul and Steve. Yeah, but it's you. You don't know what you don't know what could possibly go down. Whatever you do, don't touch me.
I'd okay. like you now it's to okay. just get off the premises. Okay. We're obeying the command of a high court judge. He just had to get that off his chest a little bit. People can throw at us whatever they think is going to have an effect. Shout all you like. Okay. If we were to react to any of it, he would exacerbate the situation. Both of you, we will not stop job and the to hell and send to you to jail. You. Okay. okay. You think I'm spitter because I, I opened the door? I, I don't need upset. to open the door. You are illegal. You are not down to hell. Please speak to illegal. your lawyer. You are not down to hell. Okay. okay. If they're flying off at the handle, and some of them really do, and when I say fly off the handle, I mean go into orbit. They're shouting and raging either in the street or in the house at the top of their voice. We just wait until it subsides, and then we'll try and intervene and talk sense. Don't say I'm stupid. This no guy, this guy, the house. power no four here. OK, no problem. For you, I'd say again, I used... He's going through all stages of grief right now. Have you got somewhere to go now? No. Definitely. It comes home because of you. So OK, are you going to go to the homeless department of the council? With two small children, Paul and Steve want the family to apply to the council for emergency accommodation. So once he calms down, take the paper to the council, explain to them everything that's gone on, they will help you. Hopefully they will help you. Good luck. Take a knife to kill me. I have the reported Louis in police station and the police investigator in... He off some type of opioid or something. He just going in. I get like he's still talking. I just said Several minutes later, Theo Mann is ready to listen to Steve. Do you want to tell me anything? To tell you anything? Only that you know the piece of paper that I gave you? I have been trying to tell you this all the time. Take this to the council. Explain to them what has happened this morning, this afternoon, OK? You have children, OK? So you need to take this to the... Ca you cannot get this piece of paper unless you've been evicted. You have Paul's card. They can call our office. Go to the council. If there's a problem, call us, OK? You're going to leave them hanging? OK, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> he left him hanging and told him okay. though. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Finally, the agent's advice has sunk in. That's what I said. Yes, sir. I need to say thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Although we've given them the greatest shock of their recent lives, people will still thank us before they go. Since then, he's actually sent emails and so on, apologising profusely for his behaviour. So he's actually levelled out. That's good. The family's only hope is that the council will find them somewhere to sleep for the night. He was definitely over-tweaking. Not over, but like, you know, he was going in. Latest reports from a leading charity show that business debt is on the rise. Last year, over 40,000 sole traders and small business owners contacted their national debt helpline seeking advice. Businesses with less than 10 employees on average carry nearly 70,000 of debt. High Court Enforcement Agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are on their way to Rochester in Kent. They have a writ Delroy. to collect a large debt from a sole trader. What we have is a Peter Murray trading as FM Aviation. All right. The total amount we need Del to collect initially is... Delroy with the leather jacket is crazy. £16,908.58. <laughs> Pets. That's a lot of dough, mate. Both the company and the individual are named on the writ. So if Peter Murray Fox can't pay, the team can seize business or personal goods to settle the debt. Mm, yikes. He did not set that business up correctly. Well, it's a lot of money, so I'd imagine that uh, he probably will have something. Well, let's see, let's see. We don't know. It could be a shot when we get there. You don't know what it is, you know. Slow down. 
102, 100, 98. Right on the corner. Right on the corner. There we go. Oh. Let's have a look around the back here. The property is not the sort of house they expected an aviator to live in. Oh, well. The airplane driver? I mean, the airplane flyer? A pilot? Residential, is it? Hello. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Delroy Anglin. I'm a high court enforcement agent for DCBL. I'm looking for Peter Fox. Peter Murray. Peter Murray Fox. Yes. Is that you, sir? Yes. Would you mind opening the door so I can have a word with you about this high court writ, sir? Hang on. Thank you. He's the old boy, is he? Yeah. All right, I'll, let, I'll step back, yeah? Ah, oh, thank you very much, sir. What's happening, sir? is that um, I'm a High Court Enforcement agent, and I'm here to collect... Is he living six... in a storefront? Is that even legal? I know people that do it, but I've always wondered, was it legal? £16,908.58, sir. So, how much? £16,908.58. They don't know what they're talking about. Well, they know enough to go to court to get a High Court writ, sir. Well... So, um, what no. are they going to do about this money, then? You know, what? how's this debt come about? Because the money... It's not that much money. That's my colleague, sir. This is Mr. Ashworth. Hello, how are you? He's a high court enforcement Hello, agent sir. as well. Hello, sir. What is the story then, sir? Well, the answer would be a bit less than four thousand pounds. Sixteen thousand is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> What's it about? <laughs> What's happened? You explain to me because we're here to enforce the debt. My bad. So I want to hear what you've got to say about it. They're always a fantastic communicator. Both of these dudes to start this off have been super animated. I, I am fully entertained. I don't know about y'all, but I, hey, every time I watch this, I'll be fully entertained. Like, look, 15 minutes gone past. Where has the time gone? Very good at talking to individuals and making them understand what's going on and why he's there. Once he gets to be in his bonnet, um, he won't let it lie and he'll get to the bottom of it. What is this? What is this you say you owe them for there? You're saying it's only 4,000. What's that about? What is that? Well, I haven't paid a lot, but the answer is we have to be um, I would be 3,000. But what's it for, though? Well, I don't know what you're coming from. Sir. I do not understand. OK, let me... 16,000 is an outright lie. I hear what you're saying, sir. OK. And I will... So I'm going to okay. stick on this. Okay, sir. Right. Shut the door. Okay, sir. No, no, no. I've got a high court writ, sir. So we need to try and resolve this. Let's let's focus on the matter in hand, then. How much do you think you'd be able to raise? I don't know. I don't know. Where would you be raising it from? That's a jolly good question. <laughs> and I don't know the answers. Well, do you have money, sir, to raise? No, I don't know. Well, I know what I'd like to do. I'm getting very hungry, which isn't helpful. Well, no, it doesn't. No, would you like to Would you like to go and eat something? Yeah. Would you like to have a cup of tea and have something to eat? A sweet drink, maybe. And, and sort yourself out. No problem at all. We want to sort it out together, don't we? Well, I'm going to... Look, if you want to follow me through... All right, let me just talk. What is this, his office? What is, um... Communal. Communal, bro. Yeah, HMO, is it? Yeah. Mr. Fox rents a one-room bedsit with a shared kitchen and bathroom. It appears he owns nothing that will come close to covering the 16,000 pounds. Yeah, buddy, y'all, y'all might be out of luck with this one. Own debt. You're renting this place as well, are you? Well, yes. And how do you pay for that, sir? How do you pay the rent here? Well, at the moment, that's difficult. If I could sort that out, I think I could sort a lot of things out. Well, you need to start telling me what the situation is. Mr. Fox still won't admit what the debt is for, but Dell wants an answer. What is the debt for? Is he embarrassed or something? So you must know what you owe it for. Well, I know. Maintenance, maintenance of what, sir? Of an error. I just don't imagine people having a plane and not being able to afford it, so I suppose it must happen, but that's the first time. No, nah, yeah, no, nah, that definitely happens. People have cars and aren't available and, uh, and aren't able to afford them. People got houses and aren't able to afford them, so definitely planes, right? To me. Right. From what from little I've gathered, he, he has an aeroplane. He's got one. Which he, yes. Um, and it's obviously, the money is obviously concerning the aeroplane. He's a little bit, he's all over the place. You can get this paperwork. I'm going to go. We're going to get the aeroplane. Correct. If he still owns it, they probably impounded it. He's not being clear, though. This is the problem. Where's the documentation for the, your aeroplane? Before they can seize the plane, they need to see proof Mr. Fox still owns it. Do you, did you buy the plane? How have you acquired the plane? 
How did I acquire the plane? That Bro, are you going to ask? Every, every time he asks a question, he just asks it back. It cost me a fair bit because the man who sold it to me did it. Dell finds a solicitor's letter with details of the hangar where the plane has been kept. Listen, it was on there. I told you, read it. Hangar, whatever it is, wherever it is. Is the plane still at Hangar 513 at the airport, sir? God only knows, frankly. When was the last time you visited there? Well, not having a motor car, at least two, if not three years. OK. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to try and have some lunch. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got your phone <laughs> number, OK? We'll phone you, all right? Thank you very much, Mr Fox. Right. Bye. With sixteen thousand pounds at stake, Brian. I'm glad Buddy is not out there flying planes no more. And Adele decide to leave Mr. Fox. They want to try and seize the plane to offset the debt, but first they need to find it. They call the hangar where it was last seen. No, pull up. We wanted to see if there was a plane there. Can you give me the name of the person? Yes, please. Yes, it's a uh, Peter Murray Fox. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Yes, Mr. Fox, yes, he does have an airplane here. Oh, he does? Yep. And is, can I confirm it's in Hangar 513? Well, it's not actually in the Hangar, but it's outside, yes. Brian and Dell head for the airport. They're seizing a plane. That's crazy. Yeah. Could you imagine? A plane. Have you ever seen anything like this? Never start. The team, no. Man, that's going to be a pile of, a, a pile of, it's not going to be. It's not going to be worth anything. It might be worth parts. You'd probably get about five out of it. The plane is there, but have no idea what type it is or what condition it's in. And it's traffic? I see what it's like, this plane. Yeah. I ain't got a clue what it is. It could be a toy plane. It could be a wingless job. Mm. Still, we're just literally coming through the barriers. Oh, excellent stuff. We'll see you shortly, then. Thank you. After chatting to the airport staff, they locate. This is a great episode. I ain't even gonna lie. This is. Let me get off this. I'm, this is a bad look for you, my boy. Hate the plane, but will its value cover? Here we go. This is a this is a good episode. How are they gonna pull this out of here? Thousand pound debt. What if it's clean? Look at look at his face. I don't think so. But ah, oh, look at that, mate. Raw, is that it? Oh, oh man, they just hit the little the jackpot. So if they sell this plane and they get more than sixteen thousand, do they give the the balance back to the guy? It's one thing seeing it on paper, but when you actually go there and see the plane, it's it's. I can't really explain it. I was quite Albanians could really use that. Quite excited. It's bigger than I thought. Yeah. It's nicer than I wow. thought too. <laughs> The plane is a twin-engine four-seater. But well, I am absolutely gobsmacked that um, he's actually physically got a plane that looks... Yeah, he haven't been here in two, three years to see it? Like, what's going on? For all intents and purposes in working order. I was talking to some of the guys there, and they said if they spend a, you know, a few quid on it, you know, yeah. it'd be worth about 30, 35,000 pounds. Selling the plane would clearly cover the debt. But Brian hopes that seizing it may force Mr. Fox to pay. It's the last cause of action to sell it. Um, Bro is not paying for this. Seize it. You might as well sell it. He's living in a joint house. Like, it's over. If we can um, get some payment from him to resolve it, we'd rather do that than, than auction it or, or, or sell it. So I want him to understand that. All that's left is for the agents to secure the asset. So this is the first time I've done this. It All just right. goes to show that we'll seize anything if it's an asset, if you owe money. Brian and Dell turned detective to get the result they wanted. They just put a lock on the propeller, like... An independent study by a national law firm has found that disputes between neighbours are on the rise across the UK. Summer 2015 was expected to be the worst on record. Estimates for cost of legal disputes between neighbors range from ten thousand to eighty thousand. Excuse me.
Cold Norton, Essex. High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are on their way to serve a writ on a couple. 9, 11. Stuart Howells and Dawn Butler owe their next door neighbour £11,000 after a bitter dispute went to court. Arguments began when the couple started a koi fish business from home. Mm, hold on, hold on, wait a second. Pounds after a Stuart away to serve a writ on a couple. A couple. Nine. Arguments began when the couple started a koi fish business from home. I don't know where the front door is, eh? If they can't pay today, the writ allows the agents to take possessions away to offset the debt. I'm Paul Bowell, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Okay. We've got a, there's a debt here to Mrs. Townsend. It's just around the corner. Is it? Yeah, Mrs. Townsend, just around the corner. No, no, but the debt is against you. Stuart Howells and Dawn Butler. Oh, right, OK. Do you know what's that to do with? It's quite a substantial lump of money. And that's yeah, a copy this is, of um, We went to court last year, and what we were doing, we were just selling fish. As a small little family run business, yeah. and uh, it ended up in coal. So, what was she trying to stop your trading from here? Having people come round to buy fish. Oh, right. Out of that, sir. So yes, I understand. She didn't want anybody on the drive when she came out of her bungalow. How did you run up to this sort of money? You tell me. The legal dispute was settled out of court. They won? But the claimant, Mrs. Pat Townsend, won a judgment for costs and the defendants are now responsible for 75% of her legal fees. Oh, wow. Can I ask a really silly question? Absolutely. This is a high court judgment. Can you pay us? Not at the moment, I can't. No. Because that, that, essentially, that's going to be the question that will be asked. OK. Well, <clears throat> I don't know where doing? we go from here, to be fair. With oh, we're going to tell you where we go. We're about to collect assets. Stuart, unable to pay. Paul and Steve can start to seize goods. A little car. What um, I'm inclined to do then is to... I'll just explain it. We're seizing all the cars here. Well, that's like a... That might be four grand, won't it? Uh, yeah. The S-type's probably worth two. The car alone won't cover the £11,000 debt. Oh, it's 11th hour. OK, wow. So the team moves on to another asset, the fish. Koi carp can be worth thousands of pounds each. There's 40 koi carp. Ain't nothing in there. Well, 39. Because one of them's dead. Yeah. That one there. He wants to take that one out. But seizing fish is a risky business. If they don't survive, the asset is worthless. So we're not going to do the fish? Why is the, it's dirty. There's no signs of an intensive, profitable business there. So there's nothing else that we could reasonably put our name on. Paul wants to get this debt settled today, but the assets here won't okay. cover £11,000. See you shortly. I reckon 20 minutes, half an hour. He goes next door to see the claimant, Pat Townsend. Come on, you. Is it all right if I sit down? Pat's son, Danny, has been supporting his mum through the dispute. Me and Danny went up there and we said, you know, it, it you can't do this. getting out of hand, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, you know, blocking up the driveway with cars coming round. And, and if we'd have left it, it'd have just turned into, like, a, a garden centre, wouldn't it? It's a shame, really. I you know, I don't... It I is. mean... She, it's just like family disputes, neighbours' disputes. Yeah. Know. While their neighbours say they can't pay, Pat believes they own a major asset. I'm not even gonna lie, like, as an entrepreneur, like, they was on some entrepreneurial, let me get some money type stuff. But it's like, you, you do have to think about your neighbors. You know, they're paying for their peace and they pay for this plot of land. They didn't pay to live next to a Texaco. Like, you hear me? Texaco, whatever it's called. Another house. How do you know there's another property? Uh, because um, she mentioned when, because when they first moved in, we were friendly, and she mentioned she rents it out. Now, one of the possibilities here, you could put a charge in order on the property. 
A charging order is a legal judgment that holds the debt against the value of the defendant's property. Mm. So if Stuart and Dawn's other house is sold, Pat would be paid in full. If we can't get a sensible agreement, it's going to be very serious for me. So Man, we're learning about all the little uh, other options here. We ain't never got this, this, this in depth. I think as bad and as big as this has probably never hit them before. OK, so we'll go back into battle. Paul and Steve head back to try and convince the debtors to pay up. Stuart's... Yeah, you don't want to lose your house. It ain't that deep. Partner Dawn has arrived home. Oh, she's... I know she finna snap. Look at her haircut. You're Dawn. I am Dawn, yes. Dawn. Sorry. I'm Paul. Ooh, and she's smoking a cigarette. It's got negative vibes. Thanks. Let's go inside. Okay. okay. Yeah, she might be nice. I see nice little pink shoes. My visit here is official. So the court order... It's a nice house. ...has been made, which actually says, in short terms, pay up or else. So I am the enemy, and I'm here to collect the money. Let's take the worst-case scenario. This court order is for like near enough twelve thousand pounds. Have you got a reasonable proposal to settle it at that figure? No. Right. I mean, my house. I've got a house. We put the house upstairs. This, this house or his no, house? No. Yeah. Um, so potentially, when that sale goes through, I've given the money there. But I, that's my retirement. As mm, no, it ain't. Stuart and Dawn can't pay. Using a charging order to secure the debt on Stuart's other property. You're gonna have to because we can't just go in here and trust your word. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the only way that the debt will be settled. But if the sale of this second house doesn't raise enough cash, the couple. It, it's a whole house? Well, could be forced to sell the home they live in too. Supposing it was this house, just talk about this house for a minute. It sits there, but if they choose to shake the tree, they could eventually force the sale of the property. The, the real problem in this, Stuart, is that you might not have any choice in the matter overall. But it is, I'm sorry, Dawn, but it is that serious. All right. They can't make me sell my house. They can. But it isn't going to be a five minute job. No. Dang. Look at this fish tank. Y'all got a hundred gallon fish tank. Sell that. Dawn, I know you're not pleased to Sorry, say yeah, that. Yeah, I'm over the moon thank to see you. you. Yeah. Don was actually really nice. I want to take back what I said. I apologize. Your haircut is beautiful. Um, the couple now face having charging orders placed on both of their houses. Paul goes back to see Pat Townsend. And I would do both properties. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. That's just on the assumption that there might not be sufficient equity in the other property. Yeah. So you need yeah. both. Yeah. You've got to understand. I don't ask you to, or expect you to understand how we work, but because we've done what we've done today, it's put tremendous pressure on them. Tell you what, though, that's nothing compared to the pressure they put my on. No. 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 I. I, I I'm sorry. Really? <laughs> Did he just say there's nothing compared to the pressure they put his mom through? Your mom, all she had, there was just cars. I get where she's coming from, but it's not the same. They definitely have more pressure than they was, than the, your uncomfortability. Paul and Steve have done as much as they can to resolve this complicated case. But the fact that we've been here today, we've done what we've done, it's a huge pressure. It's a really big pincer movement. For Stuart and Dawn, the clock is ticking. If they can't find a way to pay, they could be forced to sell their home. I'll be glad when it's all over, to be honest, so we can just get back. And they're neighbours, that's... Uh, back to a normal life. Yeah, you've had I don't five, even know what a normal life is in nah, exactly. <laughs> All over someone that's a little bit jealous, that's all it is. There you are. There's nothing I'm doing about it. This sucks. It's been reported that debt could damage the recovery of the UK economy. And it's businesses not paying their creditors on time that's to blame. One in five companies go bust because of delayed or unpaid invoices. British businesses owe each other 75 billion dollars? Pounds? 
Brian O'Shaughnessy and Kevin Stokes are driving to Bournemouth. What have we got next, sir? Kim? We've got... Oh, well, welcome, Sam Kevin. Harry Gold Limited. They have a High Court writ to collect a debt of over £4,000 from a business that failed to pay consultancy fees. The company seems to be based at the address of a restaurant called Passa. Um, done a little bit of digging on the company. The company's still active. Yeah. From what it looks like, um, could be a Turkish restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, Passa. I told you it was Passa. It? There it is. Where? 167, right. funny how. The business must pay today, or the writ empowers Brian and Kevin to seize equipment to cover the debt. Then your business is shut down. Sarigul's director is Halil Sarigulu. Hello. I need to speak to Halil. Halil? Uh, Halil, sir. I need to speak to Halil. Halil? Yeah. Sorry, he's not here. He's in his window. Yeah. Okay. Should we go to the back and talk? Thank you, sir. Thank you. The team needs to speak to someone oh, connected. Yeah. It looks like they got some good food, too, low-key. To the business. No problem. Um, the company that's operating out of here is Surrey Gold Limited, yes? Yeah. OK. Um, they've been taken to the high court. Um, there's a balance outstanding that needs to be paid today, sir, and that is... £4,163. £4,100? Yeah. Do you know about this debt? I know about this, yes. Yeah. How do you know about this court case? This court case? Because I've received a letter. I told Halil. Did you open the letter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halil asked me to open it, yeah. So Halil asked you to open a letter yeah, for him? Yeah. Halil's English is not very good. Sir. Fine. Said, can you open it, read it to me? Do you want to speak to Halil and just let him know we're here and we need to get it dealt with today, sir? Today? He's not here today. OK, do you want to give him a phone call and just let him know? We'll get it sorted out. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. You want to speak to him? Yeah, just my colleague will speak to him. Hello, sir. My name is Kevin Stokes. I'm a High Court Enforcement right. Agent. You need to pay £4,163.74, or we have to remove goods from the premises today, sir. I can't give you any time whatsoever, sir. We're here with a writ of control, so you can either pay it now, or we have to take control of goods, sir. No problem at all. He wants to talk to you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, then, uh, Quite then perfect then English. Then. He opened the letter off it. Better be careful. There's a lot of knife in there. Yeah. The agents think that Mehmet is connected with the running of the business. Are you the person that needs to sort this out? I am not the person, but I can, you know, help uh, both sides. Are you the owner of the company? I am no, not the company. I am owner of the... Business. Freehold, freehold, freehold. Yeah. You have the freehold for the building. And the business. You're the owner of Sur Oh, you're the owner of Surrey Gold. No, 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 Surrey. Unfortunately, a lot of businesses we walk into are a web of different companies. They make it very, very hard for us to try and pinpoint the exact company that's there. A lot of our work is is detective work, and we will need to make whatever checks we. Well, you, they got you here. You're a good little detective, right? I heard from last episode. Need to make to, to establish who is actually operating out of that business. If you can get me the business, if you can get me the business rates, yeah, give me the business rates. I'll have a look at your business rates. Business rates? Yeah, from the council. Business rates, I don't have it. Okay. Who pays it? Halil pays it. Sorry. For the agents, it's crucial evidence. If Halil pays the business rates, he is responsible for the restaurant, and they can enforce the writ here. He needs to pay it. Um, the last alternative that we have to do is remove goods from the premises, you see? And I don't want to do it. You've got but, your customers in here, yes, you understand? And the goods don't belong to Adam. Who do they belong to? They belong to me. The next stage is for the agents to start seizing goods. Unless we need to see receipts. Yeah. receipts. OK, now we need to see separate receipts for these goods. I, do, uh, I don't need to show you separate receipts for the shop. I can show, show you the receipt yeah. from the bank that I bought the business with all the, uh, the equipment. OK, we'll have a look at the paperwork. Business. We'll have a look. We'll have a look, sir. Whoever's claiming that the assets belong to them, it's their responsibility to prove that to us. It's not the other way around. We don't have to prove to them that they own their goods. They need to prove that to us. If we can do that now, sir, because obviously we need to carry on with what we need to do, sir. Okay. Um, uh, uh, let's get a Okay, do you want to shoot home and grab it then? Yeah, I'll go and get that. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. Um, I'm being lied to. No, no, of course. Um, he's, he's the one who owes the money, man. Tell me. Who? Him. Yeah? 
Yeah, he's got a little run in this front as a, as a front. Brian and Kevin give Mehmet time to provide proof that he owns the kitchen equipment. I couldn't even be in there, boy. I'd be so hungry. Month. But in the meantime, they start making an inventory of the goods. Samic, that's a dishwasher, isn't it? Yeah. Some of the restaurant workers are not happy at the presence of the High Court enforcement agents. Get over it. Tell your people to pay. That's what it's The dough mixer, isn't it? Mixer. What? What's wrong? You upset? My customer is upset. Halil should have paid his debts then, shouldn't they? If Halil paid his debts, we wouldn't be here. I don't care. Well, I do. Okay. That's not our fault, is it? Don't be angry. No. no. I'll tell you what, in a minute, I'll sit with your customers. Do you want me to do that? I've been nice and I've come back here. I'll shut your shop in a minute if you want. Do you want me to do that instead? There you go. <laughs> it's business, I don't know why you guys are upset. Ah, business. Talk about it. I suppose the coffee's out of the question. After Ooh. half an hour, Mehmet returns. Yeah, so much of it goes on, that's one. Oh, yeah. Find them at home. Um. He can't provide any documents to prove the goods are his. Oh, I man. don't know where did I just pay It's a lie, isn't it? Shut the shop, start listing and remove. Yeah? You and can't then we'll, do yes, I can. Well, we'll see, yeah? You can't do nothing. We'll see, we'll see. The agents are ready to remove goods, but 10... Brian is on 10. He on a tip early. Brian, shit. I mean, you don't got to chill, but... You know what I'm saying? It is somebody telling you you can't do your job when there's the paperwork right there that say I can. Chins are running high in the restaurant, so the team need backup. Yeah, I'm going to have to call 12. I see big knives all the time. Do you want to give the police a call, Kev? Tell them to get here because it's going to go when I start shutting the shop. My name's Kevin Stokes. I'm a high court enforcement agent. We'll see. You will see. Let's see what happens. So we'll let the police come and then we'll sort it out, yeah? We're in the premises. We believe as soon as we start to take control of the goods that um, they're going to try and stop us. Just rather it go peacefully, then we think it might kick off. OK, I'm going to need to start doing list of goods, OK? Until now, the diners have been unaware of the troubles at the business. But now, Kevin is heading out to the front of the restaurant to wait for the police. And they seem like they got good business. Like, y'all got, you must got a lot of debt. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not up to you. It's not up to you. Why, why is it not up to you? The police will be here soon, OK? So, no, don't, so don't concern yourself. Don't you just end up getting yourself in trouble, OK? I don't want. Pay the bill and we'll go. I don't want. OK, well, it doesn't matter what you want, sir. Unfortunately, that's the law. What started as a simple business debt collection is about to turn into a battle of wills. There ain't no will. <laughs> they on the clock. They, can, they got all day. Hiya. Hello, now ready. Brian and Kevin must get a payment or seize the restaurant equipment. If he wants to show me that these goods are his, no problem. I'll look at his documentation. If it all matches, I'll leave it. But if he hasn't shown me it, I, I haven't got the then I'm going to continue because you can't provide okay. it. Cool. They have to do their job. Mm. You unfortunately can't get your hands on the mm. documentation you say you have. You have 14 days. 14 days. Once we remove the goods, you have 14 days to appeal it. Put your hands up. Do I do your hand, uh, your hand thing? Calm yourself, you? okay? Calm yourself down. <laughs> it's about to go up. I'm explaining to you, no, don't e okay? Don't I'm not being aggressive to you, I'm explaining Don't talk to you. anymore. I want to continue now. Let's go shut up the shop then. Sorry, sir. Don't Sorry, sir. Excuse me. Good. I don't want to talk okay. to you. It's just the agents have had enough. They have over £4,000 to collect, and they have police protection. They're now ready to apply the pressure. Straight up, I would have pulled the grill right up out of there immediately, first thing. Okay, we're gonna need to shut your shop. We've got to seize the assets inside, take control of the assets inside. I don't want anyone in, I'm seizing all your goods. I don't know what in here anymore. The agents hope the threat of closing the shop will trigger a payment. No one else in. No one else in. I'm taking control of your goods, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you have to show your intent. You gotta show them you mean what's going on. Now, all this embarrassment, you could have avoided it, but you playing with them. Or what you're gonna do and let them see the reality of what, of what may occur. No one else in. Pardon? Please don't swear at me. If you don't like it, you can leave too, yeah? All right? Stop stacking up, mate. No money is being offered, so the agents start stacking chairs, ready to be removed. That's the first step, stacking the chairs up.
How long until the recovery truck gets here? Oh, it's on its way. It could be an hour. It could be half an hour. No, you know, we don't want to take any back in their shop. That's the last thing we want to do. No. But they have to understand that they have to pay it. It's a battle of wits. It's a battle of wits. With the agents piling on the pressure, the reality of the situation finally starts sinking in for Mehmet. OK, I understand. But you're making it very difficult for yourself and for myself. No, he's not. No, he's not. You're making it difficult. Okay. You're making it difficult, Mehmet. You're doing it to yourself. I don't want to make it difficult. That's why we stayed in the back and was quiet at the first, okay? Yeah. Because we tried to do it discreetly, okay? But we're left with no option. If you if you can get the payment, I would love to wait for Look, you. I can provide you thousand pounds. I've got eight hundred pounds, but I'm gonna collect another two hundred from people I know. Okay? Yeah, no, I understand. You're, I you're helping you. each other. Yeah. He makes an offer, but the team wants at least a third of the total debt to stop the action today. Okay. Let's see if we can negotiate. So like fourteen hundred. Okay. If we can negotiate and it can be paid, we'll leave. 1500 is fine. That's right. the lowest amount. Yeah. You get 1500 pounds. Yeah. Listen, 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 listen. 1500 is a lot better than 4000. We're yeah? gone and he can pay the rent. <laughs> he can pay the rest <laughs> at another time. Yeah. Debit card only, sir. Debit card only. Can't pay a debt with a debt. The pressure has worked. From what it looks like, uh, could be coming to a, a close here. Um, the atmosphere's now changed because he realizes good. That ain't nobody playing with you, buddy. We finna take this. You think it, it don't bother us to take that? Is what dude is saying, Brian is saying it. It doesn't bother us. This is our job. It could go from here today. After almost two hours at the restaurant, Mehmet has come up with the money to pay a third of the debt. Put pin in place, sir, and present, sir. As there's still money outstanding, the agents have taken control of the goods. Just in case. The restaurant can now reopen, but the owners can't sell or remove any of the equipment inside. Thank you, officers. I'm happy with that. That'll do, wouldn't it? Starters. It's a chunk of it gone, so I'm afraid if we have to come back, then it's, it's only that again to find, isn't it? You don't pay the rest in 48 hours. I'll be back there again. It's up to him. But right, we'll wait and see. But I like that one. Yeah. It's bloody hot in there as well, mate. It's baking. Yeah, it's a, it's a kitchen, Brian. No, you be good eating good. Bloody baking. I think I lost about three stone in there, mate. Good. That's excellent cap. Cap. <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> Four months and two visits later, the Turkish restaurant paid their debt in full. About time. I know the food good. Dr. Hum moved back into his house. Oh. Oh, okay. He has not heard from the tenants since the eviction. <laughs> Mr. Fox's plane is still under seizure and is waiting to be sold. After charging the order was placed on their home, Stuart and Don paid in full. Of course. Figured it out, didn't they? All right. This is a good episode, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.